All right. How you all doing out there? Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church. I'm your brother, Kasafo. Uh, we hope you all are enjoying the Shabbat day. Today, we're going to be going into the tribe of Zebulon, continuing this uh, series of learning how to identify the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, so, hope you all are enjoying the series and have been enjoying the prior lessons. All right, here we go. The 10 tribes predominantly went to the regions of Auschwitz, which were the islands of the Indian Ocean, Pacific Ocean, the Americas, and the Caribbean islands. They are known as the aboriginals, indigenous, or natives of those lands and islands. Today, the 10 tribes are scattered across the world. So they are not regulated to being in one specific area of the world right now. The 10 tribes consist of Reuben, Simeon, Dan, Naphtali, Issachar, Zebulon, Gad, Asher, Ephraim, and Manasseh. In one's personal search for one's tribal origin, one must start by prayer because we have to make our requests known with supplication. Then one has to look at our father's lineage to know our tribes, according to the scriptures like Numbers 1 and 2. If one's ancestry stems back to the slaves, the Negroes, the Bantus of Africa, or the cargo slave ships, then one is more than likely from the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, or Levi, with a slim chance of Simeon or the Ten Tribes. On the other hand, if one's ancestry stems back to any Native American or indigenous people of the Americas, Caribbean, or the Aboriginals and indigenous of the Indian and Pacific Ocean, then you are from the Ten Tribes of Israel. This series of lessons are to identify the 12 tribes individually according to the spiritual indicators that the patriarchs documented their children would face. We know the signs and the curses to help identify the children of Israel around the world today, yet through the spiritual indicators in the admonitions of the patriarchs, one can identify which specific tribe a person of the house of Israel originates from. It is by the Spirit Ahaya has given the grace to truly identify which tribe people actually come from since it is she that brings things to remembrance, searcheth all things, and we cannot know anything except the Spirit reveal them. You can reference John 16 and 13, 14 and 26, and 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 and 11 for understanding that it's the Spirit that worketh and does these things. So, jumping into the lesson, identifying the tribe of Zebulon here. Jacob testified of the good and bad that will befall the posterity of the children of Zebulon. We look at Genesis chapter 49, verse 1 and verse 13. It says, And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Jump to verse 13. And Zebulon shall dwell at the haven of the sea, and he shall be for an haven of ships, and his borders shall be unto Zidon. Jacob, known the goodness of Zebulon, prophesied of the allotment he would have in his inheritance, knowing that a remnant of his seed would be there in the kingdom. Also, Zebulon dwelling at the haven of the sea shows Zebulon is to live by the sea. So you can still find the children of Zebulon by the sea to this day. In Testament of Judah, chapter 24, verse 2, it says, And Ahiah blessed Levi, and the angel of the presence, me, the powers of glory, Simeon, the heaven, Reuben, the earth, Issachar, the sea, Zebulon. So you see, there was a relationship, there's a connection with Zebulon and the sea, even as we read in the last lesson, how there's a connection with Issachar and the earth then it makes sense now knowing that the sea had blessed Zebulon and seeing that Jacob prophesied that Zebulon will live by the sea. So you can still find them living by the sea today. Now they are scattered all over the world, yet that inclination to the sea is still there. They might just enjoy being near the water or having to do with things pertaining to the sea, like being into ships or sea life. Or even when it comes to fishing, you'll find they're prosperous when it comes to it. Now looking at the blessing of Moses, it says Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 18. And of Zebulon he said, Rejoice, Zebulon, in thy going out. This was because he would be going out to sea since that's where he resided. And the children of Zebulon are inherently good with fishing. You'll find they naturally have a gift at being able to catch 
the blessings of the sea, even as their father. So you'll find them around the sea, and they'll be good fishers. Seeing as though they'll be around the sea in a haven of ships, they are most easily found in the regions of Osiris, right next to their brother Issachar, in Panama, where this haven of ships are. And though they're around the world, you can find them there today. And you see the relationship. It also says an Issachar in thy tents. Zebulon and Issachar, there's a connection with them as well. They're always around each other. And it's going to make more sense as we go into the lesson here. You can see that blessing Zebulon had about going out and going out to the sea. In Testament of Zebulon, chapter 6, verse 1 to 3, it says, this is Zebulon speaking, I was the first to take a boat to sail upon the sea. For Ahia gave me understanding and wisdom therein. And I let down a rudder behind it, and I stretched out a sail upon another upright piece of wood in the mist. And I sailed therein along the shores, catching fish for the house of my father till we came to Egypt. So you can see, according to the scriptures, they're prosperous in the sea. So they're inclined to the sea. And Ahia blessed them with intuitiveness when it comes to the things of the sea like you see how Zebulon was the first to make a ship by Ahaya just giving him the intuition and understanding of it even so you'll find the children of Zebulon they have unorthodox methods probably of catching fish yet what they're doing is working because of the blessing Ahaya gave them to be prosperous in the sea and when in righteousness the blessings of the sea Ahia will prosper them in it even as Issachar is when he was working uprightly and the blessings of the earth would increase in his hands so a key identifier for the children of Zebulon is their dwelling by the sea and their connection with it and the blessings that come of it Jonah a Zebulonite if you have been reading the scriptures the prophet Jonah is of the tribe of Zebulon is a good example how he was very comfortable upon the seas even though it was rough with a storm and had no fear of being cast into the sea himself and seeing the tribe he comes from it helps also understand why he was so comfortable in that environment because zebulon they are prone to go into sea and they have a connection with it they've been blessed by it as we even look at zebulon himself as he speaks again in testament of zebulon chapter 5 verse 5 it says and when I was in the land of Canaan by the sea coast I made a catch of fish for Jacob my father they see that intuitiveness of things that pertain to the sea and they also have knowledge of catching fish and are prosperous in it in order to get enough to feed everyone and when many were choked in the sea I continued unhurt so you can see how Zebulon not only his righteousness also, his blessing of the sea caused him to prosper when in the sea without having any issues. And it's interesting, a brother had been messaging us, Brother Johnny, and he talked about how Jonah coming from the tribe of Zebulon. And we praise Ahaya for the understanding because you can see how Zebulon continued unhurt. And Jonah himself being cast into the sea, so he went all the way down to the depths of the ocean and was unhurt. So it's interesting to see how these blessings of the tribes still are with the children to this day and uh, you can confirm that Jonah was from the tribe of Zebulon in 2nd Kings 14 and 25 it tells of how Jonah was a prophet of Gath Hefer and Gath Hefer according to Joshua 19 and 13 is in the lot of Zebulon and if you have read the story of Jonah you see that he fled to go jump on a ship trying to get away and when the storm came he wasn't worried about being cast into the sea while everyone else was afraid to do it he was not worried at all fish came and got him kept him safe took him down to the depths brought him up without a hair of his head missing so you understand that blessing for zebulon is true and it's with the children so long as they walk uprightly uh, now getting more into the testament of zebulon here starting in chapter one the copy of the words of Zebulon, which he enjoined on his sons before he died in the hundred and fourteenth year of his life, three years after the death of Joseph. And he said to them, Hearken to me, ye sons of Zebulon, attend to the words of your father. 
I, Zebulon, was born a good gift to my parents, for when I was born my father was increased very exceedingly, both in flocks and in herds, when with the straight rods he had his portion. I am not conscious that I have sinned all my days, save in thought. Nor yet do I remember that I have done any iniquity except the sin of ignorance which I committed against Joseph. This is key for understanding Zebulon's children struggle with sinful thoughts. Even as Jonah had thought wrong after Ahia didn't destroy the Ninevites, Jonah was worried. He was worried in his mind thinking that they would want to kill him, thinking he was a false prophet, so he wanted to die. And that was a little shortcoming that Ahia had to groom him and help him grow to trust in Allah and know that Ahia's will would be done. So that was a little example of how Zebulon can fall to the wrong thoughts. Yet, from what Zebulon said, he, the only thing he did was the sin of ignorance. Hence, you can see Zebulon's children also sin in ignorance, just like Jonah, who didn't understand the mercy of Allah Hayyam, and he was upset. So it wasn't that he was doing it presumptuously. He was doing it in ignorance. So that can be found among the children of Zebulon where they might have some wrong thoughts through ignorance, lack of understanding. All right. Uh, Testament of Zebulon, continuing chapter 1, verse 5. And now also cure for that, because we have to discuss the struggles and how they can overcome. Lean not on your own understanding, but trust the high in all your ways and to trust his fear that he would always deliver, that would deliver from the, the wrong thoughts and operating in the wrong way. Uh, chapter 1, verse 5 of Testament of Zebulon. For I covenanted with my brethren not to tell my father what had been done, but I wept in secret many days on account of Joseph, for I feared my brethren because they had all agreed that if anyone should declare the secret, he should be slain. But when they wished to kill him, I adjured them much with tears not to be guilty of this sin. For Simeon and Gad came against Joseph to kill him, and he said unto them with tears, Pity me, my brethren, have mercy upon the bowels of Jacob our father. Lay not upon me your hands to shed innocent blood, for I have not sinned against you. And if indeed I have sinned, with chasten and chastise me. My brethren, lay not upon me your hand for the sake of Jacob our father. And as he spoke these words, wailing as he did so, I was unable to bear his lamentations and began to weep. And my liver was poured out, and all the substance of my bowels was loosened. And I wept with Joseph, and my heart sounded, and the joints of my body trembled, and I was not able to stand. And when Joseph saw me weeping with him, and them coming against him to slay him, he fled behind me, beseeching them. But meanwhile Reuben arose and said, Come, my brethren, let us not slay him, but let us cast him into one of these dry pits, which our fathers digged and found no water. For for this cause Ahia forbade that water should rise up in them, in order that Joseph should be preserved. And they did so until they sold him to the Ishmaelites. So you can see the compassion of Zebulon here. And we get to understand him. He's going to speak on it himself. For in his price I had no share, my children, but Simeon and Gad and six other of our brethren took the price of Joseph and bought sandals for themselves. Of the tribes, I believe it was Reuben and Naphtali Reuben and Issachar, who didn't take the money along with Zebulon. Remember, Benjamin wasn't out there with them at this time. They bought sandals for themselves and their wives and their children, saying, We will not eat of it, for it is the price of our brother's blood, but we will assuredly tread it underfoot, because he said that he would be king over us, and so let us see what will become of his dreams. Therefore, it is written in the writing of the law of Moses that whosoever will not raise up seed to his brother, his sandals should be unloosed, and they should spit in his face. And the brethren of Joseph wished not that their brother should live. And Ahia loosed from them the sandal which they wore against Joseph, their brother. For when they came into Egypt, they were unloosed by the servants of Joseph outside the gate. And so they made obeisance to Joseph after the fashion of King Pharaoh. And not only did they make obeisance to him, but were spit upon also, falling down before him forthwith. 
And so they were put to shame before the Egyptians. For after this, the Egyptians heard all the evils that they had done to Joseph. And after he was sold, my brothers sat down to eat and drink. But I, through two days and two nights, ate nothing through pity for Joseph. You can see the pity. Zebulon had a very good heart. He had a heart after Allah Hayyam. And Judah ate not with them, but watched for the pit. For he feared lest Simeon and Gash should run off and slew him. And when they saw that I also ate not, they set me to watch him until he was sold to the Ishmaelites. And when he spent in the pit three days and three nights, and so was sold famishing. And when Reuben came and heard that while he was away, Joseph had been sold, he rent his garments and mourning said, How shall I look on the face of my father Jacob? And he took the money and ran after the merchants, but as he failed to find them, he returned grieving. But the merchants had left the broad road and marched through the troglodytes by a shortcut. But when Reuben was grieved and eat no food that day, Dan therefore came to him and said, Weep not, neither grieve, for we have found what we can say to our father Jacob. Let us slay a kid of the goats and dip in it the coat of Joseph. And let us send it to Jacob, saying, No, is this the coat of thy son? And they did so. For they stripped off from Joseph his coat when they were selling him, and put upon him the garment of a slave. Now Simeon took the coat and would not give it up, for he wished to rend it with his sword, as he was angry that Joseph lived and that he had not slain him. Then we all rose up and said to him, If thou givest not up the coat, we will say to our father that thou alone didst this evil thing in Israel. So he gave it up unto them, and they did as Dan had said. So you get a better backstory of what actually transpired to see that it was Dan that had came up with the idea. And we're going to understand how even these events, there were repercussions on the posterity of the fathers. Also take note to how Zebulon explained his reaction to everything that's going on is going to make sense here shortly. Uh, continuing in chapter 5 of Testament of Zebulon. And now, my children, I bid you to keep the commands of Ahaya and to show mercy to your neighbors and to have compassion towards all, not towards men only, but also towards beasts. So, children of Zebulon, your father has given this admonishment for you to keep the commands and show mercy to all and to have compassion. This is key for your salvation to overcome the struggles that you face. Zebulon's children, from what their father testified, they are going to struggle with lack of mercy and having compassions toward people and animals. Even being heartless and indifferent, unconcerned with what others have going on. They can have a lack of interest, concern, or sympathy for others and be merciless. What's happening with the children of Zebulon, because they aren't keeping the law and they're struggling with the sinful thoughts, that is causing them to become callous because Levi mentioned how callousness comes from sin in the Testament of Levi. Chapter 13, verse 7. So their unrighteousness is leading them to be callous and insensitive towards others, whereas Zebulon, his obedience to the law and the mercy he walked in strengthened him to have compassion towards everyone. So Zebulon explained that whole situation with what happened with Joseph and how he reacted to everything where he was moved to compassion and mercy as Joseph was about to be killed and even when he was sold he wouldn't eat because it bothered him so much that what was happening to give his children an example of how they ought to be because his children they're the opposite they'll see somebody in a bad situation and won't think anything about it or would be more concerned with what they have going on and ignore the situation the person's in in that issue with being unmerciful or insensitive to what others have going on. Continuing in Testament of Zebulon chapter 5 verse 2. For all this thing's sake, 
a higher blessing. So understand, children of Zebulon, your father is encouraging you to keep the commands, to show mercy, and to have compassion, so that for that sake, Ahiah will bless you. This is what's key for you to receive the blessings that is due from what has been promised to your father and our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And continuing in Zebulon, for all this thing's sake, Ahiah blessed me. And when all my brethren were sick, I escaped without sickness, for Ahiah knoweth the purpose of each. Have therefore compassion in your hearts, my children, because even as a man doeth to his neighbor, even so also will Ahiah do to him. So you can understand why your father is encouraging you to do this. He saw through experience that compassion and mercy will keep from sickness. And he understood that Ahiah knows the purpose of each. Even as the Proverbs, the wisdom of Solomon, when he spoke in the Proverbs, he talked about how Ahiah looketh after the heart. So he's encouraging you to make sure your heart is right and a good heart will abound in compassion and mercy. Even we have evidence in David of Judah. Uh, Ahiah said he found him a man after his own heart. And when you look in the, I think it's the book of Ecclesiastes, it talks of how David was a merciful man. So that mercy is key for you children of Zebulun and also for all of us seeking to attain unto the blessings of Ahiah to walk in mercy and compassion. It was also important that Zebulun admonish his children that even so a man does to his neighbor, Ahiah would do unto him to help his children not give in to doing each other wrong because that would be a struggle amongst them, wrongdoing amongst their neighbors. And he was trying to admonish them that what you do, Ahiah do unto you so that they'll be mindful not to do harm unto another in mercilessness or lack of compassion. You'll find the children of Zebulon in their dealings, they're not concerned with how it affects others by what they're doing because they're insensitive to it and there's not mercy for other people. They're looking at things like, well, how does it benefit me? I got to make sure I can get what I need to get. And in that mindset, they'll do harm to another for their gain. They focus on themselves and not caring about what others have going on. And notice it keeps us healthy too. Having compassion and mercy, not being bitter or showing malice or grudging or resentful, this keeps us from getting sick because these spirits actually, the good and the bad, have an effect on us. As the scriptures say, do good that no evil, no harm may come unto you. So this is encouraging not only for Zebulon but for us all to know that keep away from evil so that we may not be given over to any sickness or any infirmity. Continuing here with Zebulon, he said, I escape without sickness, for I know the purpose of each. Have, therefore, compassion in your hearts, my children, because even as a man doeth to his neighbor, even so will Ahaya do to him. Children of Zebulon, your compassion needs not just be outward, but truly from the heart, even as your father Zebulon, as you've seen how he operated and reacted to what was happening to Joseph. It's wholeheartedness is essential for you all. He goes on to say, For the sons of my brethren were sickening and were dying on account of Joseph, because they showed not mercy in their hearts. Notice this is about the heart. And you have evidence that what Zebulon said was true. As you see, Dan was the one that came up with the idea with the goat and the blood and whatnot for Joseph. And sadly, all Dan's children died, save one. So you can see how this stuff really actually has an effect. What we do actually has an effect on our households. But my sons, Zebulon speaking, but my sons were preserved without sickness, as you know. And when I was in the land of Canaan by the seacoast, I made a catch of fish for Jacob, my father. And when many were choked in the sea, I continued unhurt. So Zebulon, he had told you for all this thing's sake, I have blessed him. And he goes on to explain to you how he was blessed. His him and his children were kept from sickness through his mercy and compassion towards others. And also he was prospered on the sea to provide food for his family through the righteousness that Ahaya had imparted unto him. 
And this also confirms Zebulon's children's prosperity in the sea. They're great fishers. Now, we spoke earlier about Zebulon and Issachar having that connection together, even as their blessings of earth and sea are connected together. The one goes hand in hand with the other. They support each other. Ahaya, causing the sea to bless Zebulon, has given him a connection with the sea in the good things that come from it. Even as Issachar prospers well in the blessings of the earth that blessed him. In understanding the body, doing things in orderliness, as Naphtali spoke of, you can see how certain tribes, everybody has their lot. You know, for those of you that enjoy the blessings that Ahaya gives from the sea, we have the tribe of Zebulon, you have to get <laughs> with them, you know, may Ahaya prosper them in righteousness so that they can get the blessing that's due to them so we can get to enjoy those wonderful things that Ahaya brings from the sea. And I'm sure they they cook it very well. Uh, Zebulon is actually going to talk about how he's a really good chef as well with that seafood. Their, not only their blessings of the sea is good for us, but also the blessings that Ahaya blessed them with in their works, in their good works. You had like Issachar, his singleness of heart prospered his blessings in the earth. And now you see Zebulon, his compassion in his heart and his mercy towards others gives him the blessing of the sea. Both of them were given and willing to share being liberal towards their neighbor. So just as Issachar was a great example of righteousness for us, so Zebulon, when he's walking uprightly, they are wonderful examples of the spirit of Yadche, you know, and how to love our neighbors as ourselves and to be holy as Elohim is holy. Uh, Zebulon goes on to say, chapter 6, verse 1, I was the first to make a boat and to sail upon the sea, for Ahaya gave me understanding and wisdom therein. And I let down a rudder behind it, and I stretched a sail upon another upright piece of wood in the mist. And I sailed therein along the shores, catching fish for the house of my father, until we came to Egypt. Zebulon has knowledge of ships and wisdom in the seas. And it's interesting, as we all know from discussing the prior lessons, the 10 tribes came to the region of Osir, a journey that took like a year and a half to get here. Ahaya shows signs for them. So he had the signs in the skies. He stilled the waters. And then you have Zebulon with the wisdom of the seas. And then you have Issachar with the understanding of the times. So you can see how Ahaya was very gracious to make sure they got where they were going safely. And knowing that Issachar predominantly came all the way over to the America. Issachar and Zebulon, because you can find Issachar right next to Zebulon in the haven of ships down in the area of Panama, as we know today. You can see how everybody got where they needed to go. And then when they got to the Americas, everybody could go where they needed. All right. <laughs> of course, you know, some of the tribes stopped in the Indian and Pacific Ocean. Continuing here with Zebulon, he goes on to say, and through compassion, I shared my catch with every stranger. And if a man were a stranger or sick or age, I boiled the fish and dressed them well and offered them to all men. As every man had need, grieving with and having compassion upon them. Wherefore, also Ahaya satisfied me with abundance of fish when catching fish. For he that shareth with his neighbor receiveth manifold. More from Ahaya. Zebulon's children are still prosperous in cooking fish and preparing good dishes of the sea. The thing is, they aren't considerate of others like their father in compassion. When their father cooked for everyone, make sure everyone had and had compassion for people, they are looking out for themselves, not concerned with what another person needs and how they can help another. So yes, they're still prospered in the sea because they're blessed by it but they're not reaping the benefits they could benefit if they were doing it with compassion for their neighbor and being bountiful to give unto others as Zebulon Elohim gave him extra fish because of his bountifulness so he could continue taking care of others for the children of Zebulon there's another instance where he's explaining how he operated to give you all an example of how you ought to be in your dealings and your approach to things. For five years I caught fish and gave thereof to every man whom I saw, and sufficed for all the house of my father. And in the summer I caught fish, 
And in the winter, I kept sheep with my brethren. So you can see we have Issachar and Zebulon. They are good testimony of charity. Charity, alms giving, loving their neighbor as itself. Issachar was one, he said he loved all men more than his own children. And we know Issachar was given of his blessings of the earth because he would give his first fruits, give to his father, and he would also bless those that were around him. And Zebulon, this characteristic was with him as well. And sadly, his children today, this is something that they struggle with, being given, having that compassion on others. So may I strengthen them to come back to who they truly are in Christ Yache to be those giving and loving people, full of compassion of heart and mercy toward others. And also that they may get to increase in the blessing of their father. We see how Zebulon testified because of his giving nature, being charitable to others, I will give him more fish to be able to suffice the people that he will come in contact with. So look forward to seeing Zebulon come back to that. Now knowing the children of Zebulon will struggle with being insensitive, or having a lack of compassion towards others and doing harm to their neighbor, Zebulon is about to go in to explain to you how he operates so that you can know how you are to operate in changing and coming back to the right way. Uh, chapter 7 of Testament of Zebulon. And now I will declare unto you what I did. I saw a man in distress through nakedness in wintertime and had compassion upon him. And stole away a garment secretly from my father's house, and gave it to him who was in distress. Do ye therefore, my children, from that which Allah bestoweth upon you, show compassion and mercy without hesitation to all men, and give to every man with a good heart. And if ye have not wherewithal to give to him that needeth, have compassion for him in bowels of mercy. So Zebulon, he gave you a testimony you sons of, and daughters of Zebulon, of how he operated. So you can see how you ought to operate again, what you have to come back to. Notice his compassion was sincere. He said, have compassion and mercy without hesitation to all men. Zebulon wasn't double-minded about it. It was from the heart, wholeheartedly willing to give. And he gave to, and he did it with a good heart. So children of Zebulon, have to grow in compassion and mercy and come back to that and also in that process strive to do it with a good heart without resentment or without bitterness or without contention being insincere so that's key for you all Zebulonites to come back to the blessings of your fathers continuing Zebulon said if you have not wherewithal to give to him that needeth have compassion for him in bowels of mercy I know that my hand found not the wherewithal to give to him that needed. And I walked with him weeping for seven furlongs, and my bowels yearned towards him in compassion. Have therefore yourselves also, my children, compassion towards every man with mercy, that Ahaya may also have compassion and mercy upon you. The keys for these lessons are not only to identify the tribes, but also to give us what our fathers had spoken for us to attain unto salvation and for you children of zebulon your father's consistent compassion and mercy compassion and mercy is essential for you to be delivered from what would befall you remember your father understood what will happen to you in the last days that that's why he's consistent and persistent in saying have compassion and mercy so that ahaya may have compassion and mercy upon you and you can see the spirit of allah was in him because the scriptures attest of what Zebulon saying is true because the scripture says uh, to the four he'll show himself forward and to the merciful he'll show himself merciful so you know your father was giving you good admonition so that you may be delivered here in these last days and we'll go back into it so you can see how your father understood have therefore yourselves also my children compassion towards every man with mercy and that Ahaya also may have compassion and mercy upon you because also in the last days Allah will send his compassion on the earth and wheresoever he findeth bowels of mercy he dwelleth in him this is key Zebulon knew that Yache will come it was shown to him he understood it and he knew what Yache how Yache would come 
to the world in bowels of mercy. So he's giving you the commands to help you make sure you're found in the right spirit that Yahche may dwell in you and that you may be saved. So this is not only good for Either. Zebulon's children, but it's also good for all of us because we now understand what we have to walk in. This is how we attain to perfection. Uh, Yache said in the book of Luke, be merciful as your father in heaven is merciful. And we know that's how we actually attain to perfection because Matthew 5 says, uh, be perfect as your father is perfect. And we know David had the perfect heart and he was a merciful man. So this, the fathers understood things and left us admonitions so that we may truly attain unto this salvation that is in Christ Yache. Uh, continuing chapter 8, verse 3 or 4. For in the degree in which a man hath compassion on his neighbors, in the same degree hath Ahaya also upon him. And when we went down into Egypt, Joseph bore no malice against us. To whom, taking heed, do ye also, my children, approve yourselves without malice and love one another, and do not set down in account each one of you evil against his brother. This is key, children of Zebulon, also. You have to be mindful of malice. This is something that attacks you. Children of Zebulon struggle with malice, resentment, and remembering wrongs done in unforgiveness. And that stems from the lack of compassion and mercy. Notice Joseph, a lot of the fathers used Joseph as a testimony because Jacob had told Joseph that uh, in him, Allah would fulfill some prophecy and Joseph was a testimony of Yahche indeed. So bear no malice, children of Zebulon. That's a key to identify Zebulonites. They keep malice for wrongs done against them and yet their father has remembered them and Yache has remembered them to have their father give a testimony to help them come back to the true worship of Allah Hayyam. So remember your father's command to do also, do ye also my children approve yourselves without malice. So this is something you have to attain unto this. This is how you make sure you are approved according to the will of Allah Hayyam, to not have malice and to love one another and not to set down in account each one of you evil against his brother. All right, and is with good purpose because there's a righteousness about the tribe of Zebulon that malice takes you away from. Malice and lack of compassion and mercy. For Zebulon says in chapter 8, looks like I'm in verse 6, he says, For this, speaking of malice and setting down to account wrongs done by brothers, for this breaketh unity and divideth all kindred and troubleth the soul and weareth away the countenance. Be mindful of it there, children. This is what is befalling you to be divided and have these issues when walking in malice, but your father gave you what's needed to not fall to this. Uh, continuing back in the Testament of Zebulon, he said, observe therefore the waters. Notice he's referencing the sea, <laughs> the waters, the thing that he's blessed with. It's a testimony of him as well. Like you have Issachar, he's single-minded, he's grounded like earth. And then now you have Zebulon. He's going to testify how the waters exemplifies his spirit, his character. Observe therefore the waters and know when they flow together, they sweep along stones, trees, earth, and other things. But if they are divided into many streams, the earth swalloweth them up and they vanish away. So shall ye also be, if ye be divided. Be not ye therefore divided into two heads. For everything which Ahaya made hath but one head, and two shoulders, two hands, two feet, and all remaining members. This shows that Zebulon's children will struggle with being divided, having a double heart, and not being in unity. As opposed to when they're in righteousness, they don't struggle with these things. As First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 33 shows, it says of Zebulon, such as went forth to battle, expert in war with all instruments of war, 50,000, which could keep rank, that showed their unity, they could keep rank, they were not of a double heart and they were not divided. They flowed singly as water, as their father described, that is a gift that Ahaya 
blesses Zebulon with when they are walking in the mercy and compassion and lack of malice as their father commanded. They flow together. There's no double heartedness in them and they, they're fully devoted. They're wholehearted in what they do. So as far as the members of the body, Zebulon and the righteousness that Ahaya puts in them through our Lord Yache is essential for the nation. All right? The example they set and also what they bring through the grace of Yache. Continuing in Testament of Zebulon, chapter 9, verse 5. Now, he told of all these things, right? And it's interesting that what your father is speaking of, we also have testimonies in the scriptures to see that when you, you all walk uprightly, you don't have these issues at all. And we spoke of how he understood what would befall them. And now he's going into this. Chapter 9, verse 5. For I have learnt in the writings of my fathers that ye shall be divided in Israel, and ye shall follow two kings, and shall work every abomination. So you see what happens when they're in division? They fall into abominations. So you can find that among them today, sadly. Some abominations that can be found among the children of Zebulon are being proud, which is an abomination according to Proverbs chapter 16, verse 5. And then the seven abominations of a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, which is understandable through the insensitivity of lack of mercy and compassion. They'll do harm to their neighbor, shedding innocent blood. And a heart that devises wicked imaginations in their struggles with the evil thoughts. That's a struggle they're facing. And feet that are swift to run into mischief. They're mischievous, struggling with that abomination, looking out for how they can get ahead and look out for themselves. You'll find that crime is probably high among Zebulon with the shedding innocent blood, feet swift to run into mischief, and then being heartless or ruthless, inconsiderate of others, and being willing to do harm to others to get what they want, you'll find crime or ill dealings or wrongdoing is high around them. And a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. These are the some of the abominations Zebulon can be found in and have to be on guard against. And also, as Proverbs chapter 11, verse 1 talks about, the abomination of unjust balances in business is amongst them, as every man is looking out for his own gain, with no compassion for the other man. Just trying to get over on one another. And another thing with the sea, Zebulon, the interfishing and catching things of the sea, sadly, they are eating the abominations of the sea, the unclean things according to Leviticus chapter 11, verse 10 to 13, where it tells of things like shrimp, lobster, conch, and etc. The children of Zebulon are partaking in these abominations. Also, fornication, adultery, and same kind of relations are abominations according to Leviticus 18. So Zebulon's children in unbelief right now, they're struggling with these things as well, and they can be found amongst them, among other abominations. Because he said they shall work every abomination. So, hopefully, Allah will be gracious to deliver them from these things. Continuing in Testament of Zebulon, chapter 9, verse 6. And your enemies shall lead you captive, and ye shall be evil and treated among the Gentiles with infirmities and tribulations. Notice that they would also have infirmities because... Zebulon's children struggle with sickness due to their lack of mercy here in these end times. So their health is actually affected by their compassion of mercy towards others. So that helps you understand why Zebulon spoke of how none of his children were hurt through his compassion. To know children of Zebulon, that if you are not having compassion and mercy from your heart, it actually affects your health, as your father is testifying. Um, and not only them, it affects others too, like Gad. Sadly, he struggled with hatred and he had a plague in his liver. So for all nations to know how we work on righteousness, it actually affects us. And seeing the times we're in with the COVID-19 and whatnot, it is expedient for us all to do good, to bear the fruits of the Spirit. 
we focus on the fruits of the spirit because that's from the heart and doing things from the heart causes yache to be formed in our heart and his hedge his protection to be with us to keep us from these illnesses so all that's going on in the world is more encouragement to work righteousness through the fruits of the spirit that we may be kept from the times the evil and the plagues to come continuing in the testament of zebulon chapter 9 verse 7 so he told that they would have infirmities and tribulations and he goes on to say and after these things ye shall remember ahaya and repent and he shall cause you to return for he is merciful and compassionate and he setteth not down in account evil to the sons of men because they are flesh and the spirits of deceit deceive them in all their deeds now i'm going to back up a little bit so you can get time frame what he had said in testament of zebulon chapter 9 verse 5 for i have learned in the writings of my fathers that ye shall be divided in israel and that ye shall follow two kings and shall work every abomination and your enemies shall lead you captive and ye shall be evil and treated among the gentiles with many infirmities and tribulations we know the split of the kingdoms happened so those things came to pass and he says and after these things you shall remember how and repent and he shall cause you to return and remember time the persian empire the southern kingdom which had judah benjamin levi and there was a remnant of the ten tribes you can see zebulon there's a remnant of zebulon amongst them they will return to the land and he explained why that ahaya is merciful and compassionate and he says not down in account evil to the sons of men because they are flesh you can see how zebulon is encouraging you his children to be as alahayim to be perfect as he is perfect because he understood how ahaya operates therefore he encourages his children to operate the same way so that they may have the blessings he goes on to say and after these things there shall arise unto you adono himself the light of righteousness and healing and compassion shall be in his wings, and he shall redeem all the captivity of the sons of men from Belier. And every spirit of deceit shall be trodden down, and he shall bring back all the Gentiles into zeal for him. And ye shall return unto your land, and ye shall see him in Jerusalem for his name's sake. So this is telling a Yache will come in the earth, which he did. He came to restore all things and to bring all the gentiles into zeal for him so zebulon understood how salvation was for the nations as well it's always been for all the children of allah in spirit and truth for those are who ahaya seek to worship him and zebulon goes on to say now this is telling that after yache would come and restore what would befall the children of zebulon he said and again through the wickedness of your works ye shall provoke him to anger and ye shall be cast away by him unto the time of consummation. Therefore, today, the children of Zebulon are scattered, just as the rest of the tribes. Zebulon's children struggle with wicked works through their malice as well. As he testified in verse 9 of chapter 9, Testament of Zebulon, he said, the wickedness of your works. And we can see through scriptures some of these wicked works are from Colossians chapter 1, verse 21, chapter 3, verse 8 through 10 verse 1 and 21 and you that was sometimes alienated and enemies in your minds by your wicked works yet now hath he reconciled and some of these wicked works were lie not one to another seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man which is christ as we know which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him so we see how what Zebulon was attesting for you all of old time, he was also preparing you for the gospel of Yahweh to come because he understood the light of righteousness would come with healing and compassion in his wings. And their father's command to have compassion and mercy will bring them back to the simplicity of what Allah requires of all his elect. In Micah chapter 6, verse 8, it says, He has showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth Ahaya require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy Allahayam? And this is the same calling from old time. Zebulon spoke of it. 
we have Micah the prophet speaking of it and also Paul the apostle he goes on to say in Colossians 3 and 12 put on therefore as the elect of Allahim holy and beloved bowels of mercies kindness humbleness of mind meekness long-suffering this is the gospel of Christ which will restore not only the tribe of Zebulun but all men to the mercy of Allah in verse 13 of Colossians says forbearing one another and forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against any even as Christ forgave you so also do ye Zebulon was testifying and encouraging and exhorting his children to walk in the gospel of Christ these things that are being spoken of are the same things that Zebulon said to his children to do of all time so you can see the righteousness of Allah Hayyam. It is everlasting indeed. Ah, chapter 10 of Testament of Zebulon. And now, my children, grieve not that I am dying, nor be cast down in that I am coming to my end. Now, this is interesting because he just told them all they needed to do to be saved, to partake in the righteousness of Allah Hayyam, right? Now he's telling them, don't be grieved. And why is he saying this? Because he just gave them the commands for them to see life. And now he's telling them what's to come. For I shall rise again in the midst of you as a ruler in the midst of his sons. And I shall rejoice in the midst of my tribe. As many as shall keep the law of Ahaya and the commandments of Zebulon their father. So children of Zebulon, you want to partake in a resurrection with your father. To be counted as his tribe, you have to keep the law of Ahaya and the commandments that he gave. Have mercy and compassion in your hearts and don't bear malice and set not down the evil done against you by another this is essential for your salvation your father is telling you keep the commandments bear the fruits of the spirit and believe in Yahche. <laughs> uh, going back he says and i shall rejoice in the midst of my tribe as many as shall keep the law of ahaya and the commandments of zebulon their father but upon the unholy shall ahaya bring eternal fire and destroy them throughout all generations but i am now hastening away to my rest as did also my fathers but do ye fear ahaya our alahayam with all your strength all the days of your life and you know what the fear of ahaya is from what your father admonished compassion mercy in the heart not bearing malice the same gospel that paul was preaching the same gospel that we shall all be judged by and when he had said these things, he fell asleep at a good old age. And his sons laid him in a wooden coffin. And afterwards, they carried him up and buried him in Hebron with his fathers. So brothers and sisters, there you have the Testament of Zebulon and the keys for identifying the children of Zebulon through the struggles that they face and also the admonitions of their father Zebulon of how they may overcome to partake in the resurrection. Hope this was edifying for you all. Chavata Chalam, Brother Hanu. What's on here? Naija, Chavata Chalam. Baba Kuya, hey, Chavata Chalam. Uh, Pink Feather, Seraph. Greetings, Chavata Chalam. Uh, Brother Johnny, Chavata Chalam, Sister Julia, Chavata Chalam, and Terence Jefferson. Shalom, shalom, how you doing? Uh, Michael Howard, Chavata Chalam, brother, and Sister Emma, Chavata Chalam, and Sister Diana, Chavata Chalam. Brothers and sisters, if you have any questions, please email us at hebrewreaders at gmail.com. We thank you all for your prayers, and we hope this lesson was edifying for our growth in Yache Christ. Shabbat Shalom.